Why does the gay man making like so much on my left? Bro, you are using too much memory. Use object pooling. What is object pooling? Oh yeah, let me explain a bit more about object pooling. So, when we are developing a game, there are a lot of items that will get created and then destroyed, such as bullets, you know, when the thing goes crap. Working with a large number of objects that are particularly expensive to instantiate and only needing each object for a short period of time might affect the performance of the entire application. I bet you didn't think about this. Here is the moment when object pooling comes into play. Boom! I'll tell you how it works. Object pooling is a creational design pattern in which the game uses a set of pre-initialized objects instead of creating and deleting them on demand. These pre-initialized objects are kept in an object pool. The game can request an object from the pool and then perform operations on it. And when it's done using it, the game returns the object to the pool. The implementation of this pattern can be automatic or manual. Usually, the object pool will be a growing pool, meaning that the pool will be creating new objects depending on how many are needed by the program and depending on the restrictions of the pool. Well, why do we need them? Might it be a bit of a headache? The main reason why the object pool design pattern is used is to save processing power and therefore improve performance. Its use is most effective in situations where the cost of creating an object is high the rate of object creations is high and the number of objects in use at any one time is low wait 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 you thought this is it <laughs> what about pitfalls and object pooling do you even think about them or do you only think about yourself help me help me when we are writing an object pool the programmer has to be careful to make sure the state of the objects returned to the pool is reset back to a sensible state for the next use of the object if this is not observed the objects will often be in some state that was unexpected by the client program and may cause the client program to fail the pool is responsible for resetting the objects not the clients and now but how am I going to implement it in I <laughs> no, You don't even have to write your own code. I'll show you. Alright, Andre, when I'm done with you, you will have something along the lines of this. See, right here, you see your own shadow following you wherever you go. You see your trail wherever you were. And it disappears using the object pooling method. So when Visual Studio Final loads, if you go to the header file of the object you created and then in the uh, public field, you first have to create a method for setting the lifespan of an object. It's gonna take in a parameter called in lifespan, which is gonna, which is just gonna be the amount of time it's gonna be alive for. Then we're gonna create a setter for uh, to set whether the object is active or not with a parameter inactive. Then we'll need a getter which is going to be called is active to get whether the the state of the object whether it's active or not and then in the protected area let's create the actual lifespan variable it's going to be a float called lifespan and let's have a default value of five after this we'll need a f timer handle which will be called lifespan timer let's say then we'll need a boolean called active for the state and finally a method for deactivating the object then if we go to the uh, actual cpp file inside the constructor we should set uh, the collisions for the actor to be false and then 
if you go back to the header file, you can create a definition for uh, the li set lifespan method, which will override uh, the existing Unreal Engine 1. Inside a setter, we just set the lifespan variable value to be the one given in the arguments. And also we'll create a timer, which will activate, which will deactivate our object and the amount of time the lifespan variable will give it. Then if you go back to, to the header file, we can uh, right click and create a definition for uh, is, that is active getter which will basically uh, return the value of active and do the same for the setter which will just set the uh, variable active to be the argument one also let's not forget that we need to set the actor in the game to be hidden when it's false now we can create a uh, definition for uh, deactivate which will just basically call the set active method and set it to false of course we should not forget to import the header files which will make all of this possible Uh, one thing guys, we actually, when uh, creating the setter, the override setter, we actually made a typo. Uh, set lifespan has to go with uh, capital S, so we're just gonna change it everywhere now. And then we can compile. Compile is complete, there's no errors. Alright, so now, if we find the actual class, we should create a blueprint for it. The blueprint will allow us to attach a static mesh without physically programming it. The static mesh will be our character that's going to keep spawning right behind us. Our character's name is Tusk, so just select that. Then, if we just drag and drop the newly created blueprint object, we see our character on top of it. Okay, so now that, that works, let's continue writing our C++ code. Now let's create a new extra component and let's call it let's call it object pool. So object pool is going to be our class, which is actually which is responsible for the actual pool. When it loads, we start again with the header file uh, and the public area we create a getter for the pool. For the pool object rather. Then in the still in the public area <laughs> let's create some new properties which will let us uh, manipulate the class inside the Unreal Engine editor. Of course let's not forget to include the header file as well. And when creating the second new property, uh, let's set the default pool size value to, I don't know, 100. That'll be the maximum of how much our pool can handle. How many objects that is. And finally, we create an, the actual pool, which will be a T-array of our uh, object of, objects of input. Then, if we go to our CPP, we can so actually start implementing the methods. Don't forget to include the necessary components. If we go to our begin play fu uh, function, we can start writing the main code for the pool. So first of all, we have to check if the pooled object subclass not equal to null, and if it's not, we can get the world by putting it into a constant called world. Then, if uh, the world world is valid, if everything's fine basically, let's create a for loop which will go uh, this, uh, to the size of the pool, which for our case is 100, our pool size is 100, 
and then there it's gonna create a new pullable actor which is gonna be spawned uh, it's gonna be spawned inside uh, the location where the blueprint or the basically the actor of our class is is gonna be set to false initially and it's gonna be added to the main pool we'll also log it so that we can see whether this is happening properly or not next if we go to our header file we can just right click on the get pulled object uh, getter and create a definition for it so for the definition we'll need to create a for each loop which will basically go through all the pullable actors in the pool and if it's uh, not active, if an actor that is found is not active, then return that pullable actor. After this, we'll need to create another actor class, and this time it's gonna be the spawner. This is our third and last class we'll need for this example. Here, we again go first to the header file, and we take care of the includes. Then the next step is to delete the tick function, which we will need. Uh, create a private area and start creating variables and functions for the spawner. First, we'll need a get lifespan uh, getter. Then we'll need a box component called spawn volume. Then some U properties, which will allow us to manipulate the variables needed for the spawning and the lifespans. Finally, we create a F timer handler, which will handle the spawn, uh, spawn cooldown and a spawn function. Then the, we head to the CPP file and we start implementing our functionality. We start by uh, creating a spawn volume and assigning it to the root component. Then defining what's an object pooler to the Unreal Engine and then heading to our begin play function inside the begin play we, are, we immediately start a timer which will start spawning the uh, the objects then we start writing our spawn uh, function which will basically just firstly get the character uh, the main character Uh, but let's not forget to do the includes first, of course. Next, let's uh, <coughs> get the pullable actor, uh, so which will be just a pulled object, which we'll get using the get pulled object method we just defined. Check whether the pullable actor is basically not null pointer and if it is well then we have to log we cannot spawn him and if we cannot spawn him then we need to reset a timer basically return the spawn function as well if that's not the case however we start by first setting the location of the object to be the same location as the character then we set the lifespan to be the one from the editor, uh, for it to be active, and then we set the pullable actor's rotation to be the characters, the main character's rotation. Also, then we refresh the timer so that it would call the spawn function again after the period of time. 
specified in the spawn cooldown. And again, let's log this happening so we are sure that everything's all right. And now we can try compiling and seeing if everything is okay, which it is not. So let's see what we did wrong. What was wrong in our code was that there was a small typo uh, in the function spawn where we get the player's character. When we fix this problem, when we fix this typo and try to compile, we see that everything is okay. Uh, then, after compiling, if we find our MySpawn objects blueprint and find the object pooler inside of it, we see that we need to set the pooled object subclass to be the my object within pool blueprint. When we set that, uh, we can launch it and we can see our code is working fine. And as you can see, there's one hiccup. Uh, the shadow that's spawning behind the view, well, that's how I call it, uh, is not spawning at the same rotation as our player. Let's fix that. Open up the blueprint and set the transform of the uh, of the static mesh to be minus 90 degrees in the Z axis by by the start. Then, if we if we reduce the spawn cooldown to be 0 0.1 uh, second to make it look cooler we can hit play again. Now you can see the effects working clearly and perfectly. So Andre, after you've done all of that, you have your project running. And guess what? It's using object pooling. You can see here that it's doing its jobs perfectly. It's despawning old trails and creating new ones. But what's different here is that it's not just creating new new objects every single time and deleting old ones right here it's reusing those old objects so what this means is it saves memory and it reuses it it's like it's like recycling in a sense i hope you really enjoyed that video guys and andre i hope you learned a lot now i know 